teachers. Let's be honest. We all know that self-care is crucial to maintaining well-being and effectiveness in the classroom. Strategies like adopting healthy work-life boundaries, um, eating healthy meals, staying active, getting enough sleep, these are not new to us. So what this video is not going to be is another list of 10 things that you can do for teacher self-care. In this video, I want to challenge you instead to think about why are you not doing the things that you already know you should do. My name is Charlotte and I am the trauma-informed teacher. If you're new here, this is a channel all about teacher self-care. I give you tips and inspiration, classroom lesson ideas, all the things that are gonna help you maintain a better work-life balance. In 2015, my family was involved in a major car accident that could have seriously taken the lives of my husband and my three daughters. Fortunately, that didn't happen. They're all still here today. And that experience really changed my outlook as a person. I had to take a good solid look at what was really important to me in my life. Am I spending time on the things that I value the most? Because time is not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. This experience changed me as a person, an educator, a daughter, a wife, a mother, a friend. From then on, I really had to look carefully at how I was budgeting my time and whether my values were in alignment with the way I was spending my time. Don't get me wrong, I still put a lot of effort into my job. And if you have only known me since that accident, you might think at times that my decisions are a little strange. Um, some of the things that I say no to might not make sense to you. However, all of these decisions have allowed me to support a lifestyle that is drastically changed by budgeting my time in the same way that you would budget your finances. There's only so much money that comes into your bank account every month and you have to tell it what to do. In the same way, there are only so many hours that go into your day every day and every week. You have to tell each hour what you're gonna do with it instead of allowing it to just happen. To lead a fulfilling life, you need to be in control of your time. So if we all know what we should be doing, then why aren't we doing it? Why are we making decisions to stay for that extra two hours to do lesson planning or grading when we really feel like in the back of our minds, we want to be at home cooking a nice dinner, sitting down at the table with our families, watching a movie together, having some um, time outdoors. Why do we do these things? I've come to realize in my own experience, and let me know if this is yours as well, that we're actually making those choices because we are in some ways afraid. We're afraid of the perceptions of other people. Maybe we're afraid of the peer pressure that we might be getting from colleagues who spend all of their time at school. Maybe we're afraid that our administrators are going to look down on us, um, that our evaluations will be lower. Sometimes our fears are actually valid. Um, we do have to maintain that balance because we are here for the students and we do need to get our regular work done that we're required to do. However, oftentimes our expectations of ourselves far exceed what our administrators are actually expecting us to do. Most of the time, in my case, I feel like I have been most afraid of letting myself down. Letting myself down in my own perfectionist standards that I hold that I just wouldn't let go of. In all of these cases, other people's perceptions of us can learn to adjust when we start saying no to the things that are not our current priorities. We have to say no to some things to make room for the other things that are going to be our top priorities. I realize this mindset is kind of controversial, especially in the teaching world. We are going to sometimes be leaving some work undone. Uh, making some work temporarily undone does not mean that we're never gonna get it done. It just means that it might not get done quite as quickly 
as we're used to getting it done. Hear me when I say that this work will wait. Teaching, we never really are done. We could stay for hours and hours and hours and still have one more thing. The only way that we can truly take care of ourselves is to learn to say no, to learn to put some things down, to leave, to go home, and leave some things undone, at least temporarily. Let me clarify, I'm not advocating that we are lazy about our work. I'm not advocating that we um, just you know, refuse to do the regular daily responsibilities that keep our classrooms running. I'm talking about some of those extra things that could wait. Some of those things that it makes your classroom nice and you should do them from time to time. Room transformations, um, little fun activities for your kids, those extra things that take extra planning time. You need some regular daily activities that you know have to get done on certain days of the week at certain times. But some of that extra fluff, you can pare it back, do it less often, and allow yourself to have a little bit more time for the things that you love, the people you love, and the things that you value the most in your life. So what I'm suggesting is not that you neglect your role as a teacher, but I'm suggesting that you say no to some things temporarily so that you can say yes to the bigger things, so that you can create that work-life balance that before you only just imagined, but you keep finding yourself wishing for. As a new teacher, I spent hours and hours at the school, hours on lesson plans. When I do that now, it's not because I need to, it's because there's something I'm interested in that I really want to do. Something I'm enjoying the process of. Because I love teaching and I love planning, I do find myself staying late on some nights, but I don't do it every single night anymore. I choose the times that I'm gonna do it. Also, I have more time now than I used to. When I was a young teacher, before I had kids, it was easier for me to devote all of my time. My husband would work um, late at his job sometimes. It would allow me extra time that I could do that. When we started having kids, I had to create some sort of a routine and balance because I couldn't keep my kids with me at school late every night of the week. They needed me at home to cook dinner, to help with homework, to be there for after school activities and all the things that go into making a home feel safe and secure for your children. So I did have to adjust and some things sometimes went undone, but I constantly felt stressed and guilty about it because I didn't understand that that was okay. I couldn't give myself the grace that I needed to allow myself to make those changes. There have been many seasons in my life that have caused me to reassess my schedule. Sometimes certain things will take priority over others. Like when you're a new teacher, you will be spending more time in the classroom. But as you go through these different seasons of your life, what I'm suggesting is for you to evaluate what is the most important thing in your life then. What are the percentages? If you had a, per a percentage on the value that you have for each of the main things going on in your life, what would that look like? And then budget your time accordingly. If the most important thing to you is family, then that should be where the majority of your time is being spent. If the most important thing at that point in your life is developing your career because that's the season that you're in, then that's fine. Spend more time in your classroom. But there will be times in your life where you need to make more time for yourself. You need to make more time for the people in your household. Seasons change and as your seasons change, you need to reevaluate your budget for your time the same way as you reevaluate a budget when you take on a new job, a new role, a new responsibility, when you have a different income. These decisions are going to make some people mad. What? Get used to saying no to people and not worrying about whether or not this is popular. Just remember that people who get angry with you for maintaining professional and home boundaries are not as evolved as you are at this point. Understand that they're coming from a place where they're probably putting too much pressure on themselves to do more than they actually can. You know what's important to you. Budget your time accordingly. It's only when you feel that your time and your priorities are lining up that you're truly going to feel fulfilled as a person. So now I'm going to give you some of my top ways that I have done this 
Number one, I don't take work home during the school week unless absolutely necessary. Instead, I make a top three to-do list for each day the night before. I also keep a running to-do list of small tasks for the month. Whenever I have a few extra minutes, I look at my running list to see what can be done. When it comes to getting grading done, I stay after school two days a week for that. Number two, I prioritize my sleep. I usually aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep each night to recharge my body and mind. But this is easier said than done for me right now as I'm currently getting my doctorate. I have a system down for my classes and I do certain things on certain nights of the week. Weekends are for my larger projects and papers. Number three, stay active. Incorporate regular physical activity into your routine to reduce stress and boost energy levels. I am terrible about this because when I come home, I just want to crash. So I found a few things that I love to do, like swimming in my pool in warmer weather and walking the dog at the other times of the year. Whatever your thing is, go ahead and do it. Number four, healthy eating. I try to maintain a balanced diet to support my overall health and well-being. I have a few hacks for making sure I get enough nutrients in. One of them is meal prepping my proteins. Meats take the longest to prepare, so by taking a few minutes to prep them on the weekends when I'm less busy, I save tons of time during the school week. Sheet pan meals are also great for busy nights. Check out the link below for some easy ones. Another hack is cutting up your produce when you get home from the grocery store and keeping it in airtight containers. Number five, practice mindfulness. Engage in mindfulness activities such as meditation or yoga to reduce stress and improve focus. For me, I love a five minute journal template put out by Michelle Emerson. I've linked it below in case you want to try it. Number six, stay connected. I have built a positive support network of my colleagues, friends, and family to share experiences and seek advice when I need it. I like to plan friend days and date nights on my monthly calendar at the start of each month just to make sure I'm getting them in. Number seven, professional development. Do you have a problem in your classroom? This year, I realized that the best way to solve a problem is to look around for a workshop for some fresh ideas that I haven't tried yet. Teachers are constantly solving problems. Continue learning and growing in your field to stay motivated and engaged. Number eight, I try to set realistic goals for myself and break bigger tasks down into smaller steps so I'm not overwhelmed. Whatever you're avoiding, most likely you probably need to chunk it into smaller sections. Tip nine, don't forget to celebrate your successes. Acknowledge and celebrate achievements no matter how small they are. Involve your students in this too. Celebrating class wins gives you a sense of togetherness that can go a really long way towards relationship building with your students. And number 10, don't forget that you can seek help when needed. Don't hesitate to seek support from a counselor or therapist if you're feeling overwhelmed or struggling to cope. I use BetterHelp for online therapy that is convenient and affordable. BetterHelp is a reliable online service that is private and secure. You will be matched with the therapist according to the type of therapy that you're looking for. BetterHelp takes major insurance and all of their therapists are licensed. If you'd like to check out BetterHelp, check the link in the description below to use my code for 10% off your first month. Remember, self-care is individual, so find out what works best for you and make sure to prioritize that. Next week's teacher tips video is all about responding to people who do not respect your self-care boundaries. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it. Thanks for listening. As always, don't forget to work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen.